You know, dock shooting has really, really become a great technique for catching these crappie, not only in the springtime, but fall is also a great time to catch crappie. Some of the things I look for, of course, permanent docks that you come up on that have the poles on it are great, but also these floating docks. What they're doing, these fish are holding up underneath these docks to just have a little bit of shade. You got a lot of bait fish around here. These fish can wad up in different areas of this dock and get a little break from that sunlight and they're just sitting there ready to ambush prey. What I'm doing right here, I'm getting the angle just right on this and, and I like to pull this Bobby Garland baby shad up about six inches up above my reel. That way when I bow this rod over, I've got a whole lot more guidance in where it's going to in a better aim. So when I get that low profile right here, bend it back, I'm shooting it right up under that dock and just let it fall on the pendulum and you can watch. I, I throw this high vis line because you can see it better and you can really, really watch this line. Sometimes they don't just grab it and take off with it. They may just knock it to the side a little bit or just a little bitty thump on it. One of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make when they start this, if you grab that jig by the line to bow it back or grab it by the head, you still got the business end of it behind you. What I like to do, I'll take that little old baby shed right there and that little head and I'll hold it in the bend of that hook. That way if I slip or if I try to push it a little too far and it kind of twists on me, I still don't get that hook sticking in my finger. There he is. Nice little fish. like that Cajun cricket. You know, a lot of these docks that you look at, you, you pay a lot of attention to the depth. What I try to find is something that's got some good deep water in front of it, maybe even have a, a creek swing that comes off the tip of it. But I'm sitting in about six and a half feet of water right here. It jumps up on a little lip right behind it. So really I'm fishing off the break, but also using this dock as a good source of shade and a good source that's gonna hold the bait fish too. So, so I'm really fishing two different pieces of structure in one. I'm fishing the drop off that comes on the back side of it and also fishing a, a good source of shade here. You may cover a lot of water in a lot of these docks to find that one dock that may hold 15 or 20 good keeper fish. And, and that's kind of the allure of what you're doing here. You're not beating the same old water and doing the same thing. Each dock has got its own little angles, its own little ambush points. So even if you fish 10 or 15 and don't catch a fish, that next dock that you hit, you may find a sweet spot and, and just get your limit off one dock. So it's something that uh, each dock just keeps you working and keeps you going with hopes that you're gonna hit that jackpot. On this Minn Kota, I turn it down. I, I spin it back where I'm not blowing a big gust of water on them. You know, when I'm working these docks back and forth and easing around, you're gonna have to twist and turn and get different angles. If you'll turn that trolling motor down just a little bit, you know, with that fish laying up underneath that dock, when he has a big bust of water hit him in the face, he knows something's not right, so turn it down a little bit. <clears throat> so you can tell that fish, the sun's not really got on those docks good yet, so he was scattered more out, you know. Once that sun starts getting up and, and really pushing those fish underneath the docks, that's when it's good to start hitting these. Not a little one. You know, with the dock shooting, there's several different baits I like to use. My key baits are the Bobby Garland Baby Shad and also with the Slab Slayer. These baits are baits that skip real well. They've got a good presentation in the water. I'm throwing this on either a 1 seconds head or a 1 24th. I don't want to make a lot of noise when I throw this bait in there. And so that's why we use the presentation of the, uh, the dock shooting. You can bend down, get a low profile, and it skips real well underneath that dock. You know, with crappie fishing, there's so many different colors and different baits. Uh, and, and I know a lot of the fishermen think, well, color doesn't really make that big a difference. In crappie fishing, believe me, crappies, the, the, they can really see these colors and they can distinguish between these colors a lot better than what you think they can. And I've had uh, a lot of times using the exact same bait and change color on the head, 
uh, swap from, let's say, a, a, a yellow to an orange or even a pink. I throw a lot of pink heads. And at times, that makes the difference in getting more strikes. Is something in that watercolor that it makes this bait really stand out and they can see it better. So don't be afraid to change colors around. Uh, not just with your baits, you know, the, the Bobby Garland products have a, a wide variety of different colors, different sizes, different types of baits that are all great for skipping these docks. But change that head color too, it may get you some more strikes. You know, shooting these docks is not something that you're just going to pick up on real quick. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of timing. It's about like a golf swing or shooting a bow and arrow. You know, you're going to have a lot of miscues. You're going to hit the dock or have, have some shots that go off, but hey, you get that one shot that skips in there real good and all of a sudden that line thumps and it'll keep you coming back to do it again. <laughs>